John Horgan and Polly Stevalato. Polly, I feel like a, a toad underneath the mushroom here looking up at Pete. So this is how the little people are, huh? There he comes, yeah. Uh, tonight, our first uh, fight on the docket after the uh, kickboxing exhibition. Uh, Jim Tuberosa mentioned about Mickey Ward and Mickey Ward having hand problems. If a boxer has hand problems, that's like a, a sprinter having hamstring problems. You're all over sometimes. Definitely. Uh, you know, these uh, fighters, when they're working in the gym, hitting the bags, and they get to the, uh, hit their hands, their ligaments. And uh, when they do that, they get very sore. And uh, and how are they going to box if, if it's in that condition? So they got to be right when they're fighting. And it's up to their trainers to know that they're injured like that because uh, they'll have to hold back and, 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 lo and lose a fight. So uh, he should be right. And if he had to pull off for those reasons, uh, he's credible for, for that. And they should make sure a guy... Especially your hands are all right, and that's what they've done in that fight. So let's go to the ring now. Jerry Ocampo. Jerry Ocampo. And to the front of my right, the red fire, weighing in at 125 pounds, he's wearing green socks with white trim from Philadelphia. A warm welcome to Detroit. Smith. Smith. Okay, Polly, it's about at 145. Call it a light, lightweight, right? Junior light? Well, junior welterweight uh, could be lightweight. 147 is, is welterweight, so he's not, they're not too far. But I tell you one thing. Light would call it then, yeah. Yeah, they could be lightweights right now. But, but uh, these kids look like in great shape. They're real lean, and I think you're going to see a good fight here. They uh, uh, look like they have uh, been ready for this and uh, well trained. Uh, you don't see no fat in these, in these boys. Junior welterweight match, Phil. Uh, from Philadelphia, Troy Smith in the green trunks, and he is fighting Jerry Ocampo from Springfield, Mass, in the black trunks, round one underway at 145 pounds. Yeah, Philadelphia has known Polly for producing fighters. Oh, tough fighters. When you're fighting a guy from Philadelphia, you know you're in a fight. You can see that right here now he's got a tremendous left jab that's uh, like a right hand uh, when he's throwing it. And when you fought a opponent from Philadelphia, you know you're in trouble. They, more fighters are ruined in the gyms in Philadelphia. They, they never get to the opportunity of boxing because they kill each other in the gyms. But uh, I'm not saying that's good, but that's just a bunch of tough kids from there. Combination here, Polly by Smith. He is going to work on Ocampo. Ocampo is in big trouble right now. In fact, here goes Smith with a combination. Ocampo trying to fight his way out with a nice left hand. He misses with a, a glancing left. Now, but it is Smith, who is the busier of the two fighters. He, in fact, he's having all of the going early here, Paul. Smith looks to be the more polished, the more professional, the, the sleeker fighter. Yes, you said it with those words, polished and, 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 and ready to go and none of that, but he's a tremendous, nice, nice combination, it's quick, fast, and solid, solid punching. And he knows where he's going, he knows where, where his targets are, and he studied his opponent very quickly. He's already got the mistakes that he's making, and uh, he's landing some serious blows on him. This is the first bout on our docket. Jerry Ocampo in the blank trunks, Troy Smith in the green. Uh, Smith uh, dominating this first round. Both fighters exchange blows. Though Smith, though, landing uh, the more complete of the punches between the two. And the pros, they come quicker and they fall harder, Paulie. Yes, they do. They, uh, they, uh, these two boys know what they're doing. And uh, there's, there's serious punches being thrown. And uh, Smith is really landing the, the, some solid blows on him. And, uh, his opponent is, uh, seems to be taking a little too much in there. And you can see, down. but he, he's a great fighter, and he's going to come back and uh, really uh, open up this thing. I think he's uh, waiting for the first round uh, and feeling out his opponent, but he, he felt a little too much from his opponent. Yeah, right yeah, from he, what I see, he's grabbing at fireflies, and, he, and he's paying for it now. Boy, you get the bill right there as Ocampo is spattered in his own perspiration in this first round. Nice shot to the midsection by Smith with a nice uppercut to the body. And Troy Smith from Philadelphia dominating this fight. There's a spread eagle stance by Ocampo. I know it has a lot to do with the fatigue and the, uh, the punishment that's been issued by Smith on him, but uh, it's unorthodox. And in fact, it's a disadvantage as far as height goes because that makes him a smaller fighter. Yes, and of course, you know, when you're hurt, you do take your stance gets a lot wider. But then that comes with good punches. punches. They uh, take a wide stance because they really uh, level in uh, with those punches. But Campbell hasn't uh, cut off the ground yet. He can hit some serious blows in the beginning of this fight. I don't think he expected uh, this opponent to come in with this type of a barrage of punches. And uh, he doesn't show any signs of being hurt, but he's definitely a little hurt up there because he's not uh, exchanging any uh, serious blows. But in this round coming up, I think Campbell's going to have to start going to work because you just can't uh, be absorbing those punches and expect to be around the last round. Uh, round one. 
dry smith. The green trunks, as you see the salve being, Paul, tell me about the salve. What's that doing? Is that a preventive measure? Uh, what he's doing up there now is putting a little Vaseline on there. Of course, uh, the, the uh, guy in the, in the back of him is watching that he don't put too much Vaseline on. He's not supposed to put just a very... Uh, he's from the boxing commission. The boxing commission, and he's watching the, how much Vaseline is put in his eyes and uh, making sure, like the safety rules that they do, that nothing else is being done up there. No uh, barbiturates or any sort, and, uh, and the water is going to be checked by the commission that they're taking them out and rinse out. But uh, they make sure that too much fasting is not put on their faces. And, uh, it's because what that does is your punch slides off and you don't cut as much. Is that, is that the reasoning well, behind uh, that? Uh, yes, uh, it would only slide off, but it gets on the other guy's gloves and gets in their eyes and then it, it would blind them. So uh, it could be a bad hazard for either one of the fighters. You know. We're round two now. Jerry Ocampo from Springfield, Massachusetts in the black trunk and the blue corner. Troy Smith who run one round one. And the green trunks from Philadelphia. He comes out of the red corner. Smith now looking the strategist, hmm? trying to place those punches like a surgeon. And then look at, looking in, where where's he going to land? Hmm, where can I get that opening? Ocampo has um, uh, presented a very inviting target for Smith so far, and this is only the second round. Smith trying to sting that left jab. He's a stand-up fighter, Paul. He's got that classic boxing stance. You can tell that he's well trained and well seasoned. Yeah, he uh, Smith manager a little uh, Sugar Ray Leonard. You know, he knows what he's doing right now. He doesn't have to move too much. Uh, he's not dancing too much because Campo was uh, just uh, sort of being uh, right where he wants him. He uh, he's using a lot of great combinations on him. He's a sharp puncher, Smith, and he's very confident up there. You're looking at him. He looks like he looks. He can destroy him anytime he wants, and uh, he's doing a number on him. But uh, I wouldn't sell Campo out. I think he's gonna. You're gonna see an outburst come from him before this is over. Yeah, Smith just jumped on the bike there. Nice. There's a nice combination by Ocampo. And that left hand lands, and the crowd responds. And finally, the underdog, the Don Quixote, fighting the windmill here, Ocampo. And finally, he lands something that wakes up the crowd. Now, an uppercut missing by Smith. Smith misses with the uh, glancing left cross. Ocampo, as we said, he's been the downtrodden fighter. He throws a wild left hook that connects. Smith might have been stunned. He's holding on. There's another shot, another left hand, as Ocampo has to literally leap in the air to throw that left hand. Yes, he has. And you know, uh, Smith was doing very well in there, but he took some punches with a smile on his face. And but, now... But you notice he did uh, miss a few punches right after taking those punches. And now the balance too, Polly, as Smith goes to town, and in fact, he's got a room. But now back comes Ocampo. There's Bedlam here in round two. Oh, the crowd loves this one. Everybody's awake now, Polly. Yep, it looked as though payment was due. The bill wasn't there, and then all of a sudden, Ocampo said, not just yet, there's a telling right hand by Smith. Oh, my, he rocked Ocampo. Ocampo is wobbled. Smith uh, trying to seep in with those punches, those heat-seeking punches, trying to get in between the crack when Ocampo covers up. You know, it looked as though it was just going to be a sleeper, but, Paul, this has been a wild one so far. Yeah, the Campbell took a tremendous right hand from Smith, and I was hurt in that one. I could see that, and he's uh, trying to get his head together right now and, uh, and get his uh, ability back. And uh, if Smith keeps putting on some pressure, he may have Campbell uh, in, in a lot of trouble. But Campbell uh, is not out of this fight yet. He'll, he'll be back. That's right. David has a few more rocks for Goliath. There's a straight left jab by Smith. He misses on a wild right hand by Ocampo, who shows frustrations, Paul. He's going, he's just like blowing out air like, geez, I thought I had you there, I thought I had you there, and you're getting out of my way. You're getting out of my crosshairs. Yeah, he is. He, so he took some real solid blows there. And he's, he's been hurt a little bit, and he's reaching out. He's, he's lunging in with his punches, which is a bad thing to do. When you're lunging in, your opponent Smith just steps back and comes back with a right hand and can hurt him very easily. So Campo uh, seems to be a little worn up on the vicious punches that he took in that f first round. Round two, special thanks to Johnny Gagliardi and Jim Tuberosa. Johnny Gags, a old friend of yours, putting on a good show here tonight. We're, seeing, we're gonna see his son fight later on. We got Mickey Ward, we got Ali, we got uh, this guy from Philadelphia. In this fight here, that second round, Ocampo, as you hear, heard the applause at the end of the second round, they like to see that underdog. You know, they don't want to see somebody beat up on somebody else. People think that that's the mentality of the boxing fan, and it's not. They want to see, see good, clean boxing action. They definitely do. Of course, you know, uh, when a guy's taking a beat in the beginning of a fight and all of a sudden comes back, they're going to move for the guy that was taking the beat. And they all like the underdog. They like the guy that uh, comes up from taking the beat or you know, somebody who's been down and uh, gets up and starts fighting back with a barrage of punches. The crowd always shifts over to him. So uh, sometimes looking too good all the time, you lose the crowd, you know.